Hi to everyone who's joining us again back from the Easter holidays. We are reading uh, the Pi Martin's class story and today we're finding about Brian Wong who is never ever wrong. Many years ago there lived a boy named Brian Wong. Wong was a total and utter swat. Not only was he the swattiest swat who ever swatted, he had to be right about everything. Brian Wong is never ever wrong, he would explain, much to, to the annoyance of everyone around him. The boy's favourite subject was mathematics. His favourite pastime was working out what looked like impossible sums and equations. Even if he didn't have any maths homework to do, Wong would set himself some. These he did with ease. All Wong's evenings, weekends and holidays would be spent working out hundreds of answers to incredibly complicated equations. Equations that would leave even the cleverest teachers scratching their heads. As a result of all his maths, maths, maths and yet more maths, Brian rarely saw daylight and was a rather pale child. And working on equations until long into the night had weakened his eyesight, so he wore wire-framed glasses with lenses so thick they magnified his eyes to the size of tennis balls. So you can see Wong prided himself on being a mathematic genius and cleverer than everyone around him. Every single answer Wong would get right. Despite this, what the boy most feared was the thought that one day he might be proved wrong. This is the story of that day. It was a Monday morning and Brian was at school in his favourite lessons, maths. As he stood at the front of the class, the old maths teacher, Mr Shrewdly, uh, addressed his pupils. One thing you must always remember, boys and girls, is that numbers are infinite. What does infinite mean, sir? asked the girl at the back. Brian Wong, who was sitting right up at the front of the class, tutted loudly. Tut, tut, tut. The boy tutted anyone he considered not as clever as him, which was everyone. That is a good question, replied the teacher, giving Wong a stern sideways glance. Perhaps you could always, perhaps, because you can always add one to anything, they go on forever. They are, therefore, infinite. The children all looked around each other, attempting to grasp this idea. Now I want you to think of the biggest number you can, continued the teacher. Lots of eager little hands shot up. A million, said one boy. A billion, shouted another. A trillion, called out Kenneth Chan. A trillion, 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 announced Francis Francois behind him in a triumphant tone. Surely no one could think of a bigger number than that. The teacher was most amused by the pupils' efforts. Ah, oh, very good children, very good. But can anyone top a trillion, trillion, trillion? Wong thought for a moment. A trillion, trillion, trillion and one. Good answer, Wong, announced Mr Shrewdly, shrewdly as the class groaned in annoyance. The swat had struck again. Now, can anyone top a trillion, trillion, trillion and one? I can, I can, replied Brian. A trillion, trillion, trillion and two. A trillion and trillion and trillion and two indeed. Now, can anyone top that? asked the teacher. I can, replied Wong. A trillion, trillion, trillion and three. Yes, yes, well done. Thank you, Wong. So moving on, the point I am trying to make is a trillion, trillion, trillion and four. Yes, that's quite enough now. The normally mild-mannered teacher was becoming irritated. A trillion, a trillion, a trillion and... Please be quiet, Wong! shouted Mr Shrewsbury. Silence descended on the classroom. Thank you. The teacher was shocked by his own outburst, but quickly gathered his thoughts. As I was about to say, this shows you that numbers are endless because you can always add one. Therefore, try as you might... No one can ever count to infinity. Not even you, Brian Wong. 
There was a pause for a moment as the class took this in. Wong looked at the teacher, his googly glasses enlarging his eyes to the size of crystals, crystal balls, symbols, sorry. The boy blinked and announced, I can. All the children in the class laughed. Settle down, please, Mr. Shrewdly tried to quieten them before turning back to Brian. This may be the first time in your life you've heard this, but you are wrong, Wong. Brian Wong is never wrong, replied the boy with great certainty. Mr. Shrewdly shook his head and said, This time, Brian, Wong is very wrong. No one can count to infinity. Not any of the great thinkers of the world. No one, not even you. Wong had never been wrong in his life and he was not going to start now. This was not a moment he began. This was the moment he began his doomed mission, a mission that would change the course of his life forever. Brian Wong is never ever wrong, insisted the boy. I am a genius and therefore I can count to infinity. I can, I can, I can. Go on then, shouted Chan from the back of the class. Yes, joined in the other pupils. Even the normally sensible Mr. Shrewdly felt inclined to egg the swat on. By now, they all wanted the same thing, to prove Wong wrong. We are waiting, announced the teacher with a wink to the rest of the class. Wong briefly cleared his throat and then began. One, two, three, four, five, six. There were gales of laughter from the other children in the class. Wong really was going to try to count to infinity, just so he wouldn't be proved wrong. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, continued Wong. The class could not believe he was really going through with it. Two hundred and seventy-three. 274, 275. On and on Wong went until the bell clanged for the end of the lesson. Thank you very much, Wong. You can stop now, announced Mr. Shrewdly with a chuckle. 274, 275. But the teacher underestimated Wong. This was a matter of pride for the boy. He was not going to stop until he reached infinity. 267, 277, 278. Brian strode out of the classroom, still counting, as Mr. Shrewdly shook his head in disbelief. How long would Wong keep this up? The boy counted all the way through break time, and then through some more lessons, even including PE. Then through lunchtime, and then through some lessons before the bell, clanged one last time before the end of school. As Wong marched out of the school gates, he carried on counting. By this time, he had reached the high thousands. 9,736, 9,737. As the other boys laughed at Wong at the bus stop, Chang felt a pang of guilt. He tapped his classmate on the shoulder and said, Come on, Wong, let's get an ice cream. This is stupid. A furious look crossed Wong's face. You have made me lose count, he raged. Now I have to go back to the beginning again. But Wong, one, two, three. When he returned home, Wong counted all through dinner. 30,609, 30,610 and bath time. When he went to bed, he wrote down the last number he had counted on a piece of paper. 48,392. That way, he could start again as soon as he woke up with 48,393, which he did. All through the next day and the next day and next, Brian Wong counted and counted and counted. Soon he had reached the millions and after a couple of years, the billions. When he reached a trillion, he felt it was too late to stop now. So he carried on into the zillions. Two zillion six hundred and three, one hundred eight thousand, one zillion. P 
people from around the surrounding villages and towns would often come to watch Wong, never-ending task. They called him Counting Boy, but in time they had to change that to Counting Man as he grew older. His hair was turning grey. He had to put even thicker lenses in his glasses, so now his eyes were the size of footballs. But still, Wong would not be proved wrong. He was going to count to infinity, if it was the last thing he did. But when his math teacher, Mr Shrewdly, died of old age at 103, Wong refused to stop. Nine gazillion, seven hundred and eighty zillion, forty trillion, three hundred and eighty billion, ninety two million, four hundred thousand, five hundred and two. The numbers were becoming quite a mouthful. As time passed, Wong himself became an old man. He had been counting non stop for sixty years. He had long flowing beard, the length of an elephant's trunk. Yet still he kept counting, counting, counting. As long as he kept counting, Wong thought, he could not be proved wrong. Eleven gazillion, nine hundred and ninety zillion, one thousand, one hundred and sixty million, six hundred and three. Finally, one night, Brian, Wong, was lying on his deathbed. He was now one hundred and eleven years old, and life was slipping away from him. Yet he was still counting, 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 hoping that somehow the next number might just be infinity, though it never, ever was. His old classmate, Kenneth Chan, came to visit him one last time. Wong was fading fast. Chang perched on the edge of Wong's bed and said, You don't have long left, my friend. Perhaps it's time to stop counting and enjoy the last few moments of life you have left. Wong looked at Chang straight in the eye and expression of extreme annoyance on his face. <sighs> you stupid fool! You made me lose count again! Now I have to start at the beginning. Wong, no! pleaded Chang. One, two, three, Wong began. Of course, Brian Wong never did reach infinity. However, just as he could not prove that the number infinity existed, no one else could prove that it didn't. Wong died with a smile on his face. He had wasted his entire life counting. But what was much more important to him was that he had not been proved wrong. On his gravestone it read, Here lies Brian Wong. He was never, ever, 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 ever wrong. Especially not about the whole counting to infinity. Next time when you join us, we'll be reading Windy Mindy. Take care.